VIP Access VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. This week's podcast is spicy, for lack of a better word. I have Brown Sugar herself here. Yes. She's a boss lady, a creative entrepreneur. She's a playlist curator. She's a musician. She's a content curator. She has a degree in journalism and so many other things yes. that she wears on her cap. Yes. And this beautiful hair. Welcome, <laughs> Valerie Madoni. <Thank> <laughs> What an introduction. What's up, girl? What's up? Hey. I'm actually finishing my journalism degree. I love it. Yes. I love it for you. Yes. And I can tell from your bio, like such a beautiful, mm. well-written bio. I love Thank it. You. I did you know, it myself. All the bios are like, I won this award <laughs> and my album is this. But it's right. just like, no, I'm a boy. Who are you? Who are you as a person? I'm all these different things yes. and still exist as you know as a person yes yeah. i love it thank you i wrote that bio myself i could tell uh, i could tell and this is what i advise artists i always say like mm. i can even help you as a publicist mm -hmm. but i can't define yourself better than you right so sometimes i always tell artists write me a little thing about you then i'm gonna spice it yeah up. as a guide but it's always best for you to define yourself mm. to define your brand mm -hmm. and is one person defining herself and her brand. Period. I love it. Thank you. We learn from the best. Come oh, on. Asante. <laughs> yes. And it doesn't stop at the, you know, writing your own bio, but mm. even um, creating your own artworks. Right. Which are so dope. Thank you. You're such a talented multi-creative. Um, Did so you good. learn all this at journalism or it was just mm. your thing that you wanted to create different mm. assets and mm. different arts? Right. Well, I have always been a creative. Honestly, it's one of those things since I could talk, I've been singing and entertaining. And being raised by a single mom that I've watched her do everything herself, um, I've learned that being an independent artist that also manages herself, I kind of have to do a, learn how to do a lot of things. So I always liked graphic design, so I did my own artwork, um, had to study on how to make EPKs, press kits, learned how to do that. Uh, it's really just being an independent artist makes you so self-sufficient. So I think that's where I got it from. And I, so I'm always learning, learning how to do new things, <coughs> learning how to, yeah. But I think what I enjoy the most about you explaining, you know, your passion for this is mm. you, you just like are glowing talking about like you seem to be enjoying it. Love it. How did you, you know, end up being the person who's creating your own artwork or your own bio and you find a way of enjoying it? Because mm. most of the other artists, they always find like, oh, it's a burden mm. for me to write a, an email, mm -hmm. to write a bio, mm -hmm. you know, to do a pitch for myself. But it essentially should not be a burden. It mm. should be a joy. So you should find it in yourself to be comfortable right. in self-promotion. Yes. Or self-branding, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. How do you, where do you find that comfortable spot? Well, I will say it's not the most fun thing to do. <laughs> it's, it's very time-consuming. Yes. It can get frustrating doing things by yourself a lot. But because I'm so passionate about this this art and this creative direction and just being a creative, I've just learned to be like, and I know no one's going to do it better than I am. Mm. And no one's going to execute it in the exact way I want it to mm. be done. Because you are the one seeing the vision. Yes, yes. And, you know, along the way, you'll find people that can help execute the vision, but it's it's very hard. So I've just learned how to do the artwork myself, write the bio myself. But I'm trying to let go and, and, and delegate more. Mm. so that Especially the things you can let mm. go of. Mm -hmm. I, th I feel like it's, it's still not... It's not easy for somebody mm. else to tell your story better than you. Right. But there are other things over and above the story, like, mm -hmm. you know, projects, implementation that other mm -hmm. people can do. Right. But you probably can write your bio best than anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so that, you know, I always used to say it's like, you have to learn all the facets of your business before you have someone. Before I even get someone to manage me, I need to know what I'm hiring them to do so mm. that they don't come and tell me, oh, this is what you need. And I'm like, no, I know what I need, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I hope that was a good answer. It was a good answer. <laughs> it was a good answer. I feel like we, we started talking about, you know, all these things that uh, Valerie mm. does for mm. herself and her brand right. before... In reintroducing Valerie to those who are listening, um, mm -hmm. in case 
they might not have heard of your music or mm -hmm. known where you're from. So Valerie Modoni is a right. Kenyan American singer. Um, yes. I want to say dancer, you know, creative director, yes. but just really an amazing artist in whatever mm -hmm. she does. You know, you see the, 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 the you see her touch in it. Like yes. I see your artworks and there's kind of like, an just essence. A, there's an essence, mm -hmm. you know, it's very Valerie. It's very yes. cool. Yes. Um, over and above that, mm -hmm. I think you have songs that, you know, speak to women, especially. Mm -hmm. Songs that evoke feelings of confidence, yes. you know, from power with um, with Fena, Fena and Zinia, who's mm -hmm. your bestie, mm. to you know, brown sugar to V2 um, Quagrani, Vitu yes. Quagrani, different, yes. Like, and for some reason, I always think of your songs and think of how um, bold the titles are. Like, mm. I see your songs, I see the titles, yeah. And um, what I also love about you is mm. how you double in singing and yeah. rapping. Yeah, I find that super cool. And really? I, I don't know, like, how do you define yourself? Are you a singer or are you a rapper? Or which one are you more than wow. the other? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad that, you know, I mean, for a while there, I wasn't sure if it was a good thing or it was working against me because sometimes when people can't put you in a box, like they can't say, oh, you're the best, you know, you're a singer or you're a rapper and you do all these things. I sing, I rap, I do R&B, I do hip hop, I do Afrofusion. When I feel it, I, I do like trap. So I've just always been multifaceted. Mm. I, I never thought I was going to be a rapper. I'd always planned to be a singer since I was a kid. Mm. And then I started doing poetry in high school. And then that evolved into rap. I was like, oh, I can, I can do this. And I saw the reaction of when I rap, people are like, people are paying way more attention. People are like, oh my God. So I was like, okay. I'm going to try. So I've been, throughout my career, I've been trying to find that balance between singing and rapping and using it to my advantage. Mm. And I think I'm, it's working out really good so far, especially in this upcoming EP, Wink, Wink. <laughs> so um, it has like a few play on words. So Vision 2020 is a project of accumulation of all my experiences that I went through during the pandemic mm -hmm. and the lockdown. That's love, heartbreak, hope like growing rebirth as a person transformation depression all those things I, I put them in the music and through those experiences I gained 2020 vision Ooh. so vision 2020 mm. 2020 vision mm. um yeah that's that's it it's I'm so proud of the project. It's been three years since my last EP. Mm -hmm. And I've grown so much musically as a human being. I'm definitely not the same person I was. Mm. And so I, I I hope people enjoy it as much as I have. And it's taken, a, it's taken a while to put it out. You know, artists are very sensitive about their art, especially when it's so personal of to course, them. Of course, of course. There's a lot of past. There's like one or two songs that are incredibly vulnerable. So um, I just pray that people take it and and process it as the way mm. they'd like. Which are the songs, which are these songs that you talk about, you know, that are incredibly vulnerable and mm. and why did you feel like, you know, I let myself out there like I haven't before? Mm. Well, there's a song on there called If I Do, If I Don't, basically saying I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't mm. because there was like some certain events in 2020 that happened on the internet that were very traumatic and I never really spoke about them. You know, people people at the time, everyone wanted me to say my side of the story. It was put out a statement. Then there were other people in my ear telling me, don't say anything, just keep quiet. The internet's, internet is going to forget. And with that experience, I lost a lot of friends. I lost, it, it was life-changing. So in that song, I kind of like say my side of the story and say, what I was feeling, how I was feeling, and that was my way to process that. And I've, I feel like I have processed it, and I'm, mm. I'm glad it's finally coming out because, you know, music is the way artists tell their truth or say, you know, yeah, say their side of how they feel. And so I can't wait. It's not really a bob party. If people are going to turn up to it, it's really just me putting it. I put that out for myself, mm. not for anyone else. Yo, mm. deep. I'm actually sorry, you know, that incident happened and mm. I 
missed that incident. Mm. I'm not even going to lie about it. Don't I, get yeah, I, I don't want to ask this. her to what happened, <laughs> but mm. eh, a lot is happening on social media. Right. And, and for me, I appreciate that I finally started living life outside of social media. Mm -hmm. And I feel like also that started... Um, with the COVID period, hmm. you know, it was just a, a, before that, that just this addiction that, right. you know, what are people saying on Twitter? Right. How many I posted on this Literally. channel? It's crazy. But I'm enjoying existing yes. outside of social media from time yes. to time, you know, because yes. sometimes social media comes with a lot of uh, baggage mm -hmm. and sometimes negativity, which is mm -hmm. not what we're looking for when you go on there. So it's not what I, we're designed for. Not at all. So mm -hmm. I, I, I I missed what happened, but I can imagine um, that kind of stress and that kind of pressure mm -hmm. and that kind of you know bad vibes, if at all mm -hmm. they were that bad. So I'm sorry. And Thank I'm you. so glad you're over and above that. Of and course. now you're even putting out a song for yourself. Yes. But That's speaking dope. of social media, even like I took a, a, a social media break, mm -hmm. hiatus from January to like March. This year? This year. Okay. Yeah, I had to. You just wanted a little break. I had a time. You know, there was, a, um, there was an interview I was watching for Stormzy and he was just talking about how God didn't design human beings to know what everyone is doing at every moment. Yani, I'm seeing, okay, Nico is in Belgium. This one is here. I'm seeing someone that talked smack about me is, is, is hanging out with my friend. Like, there's so many things that we were not made, designed for. Mm. Others would have been able to read people's thoughts. And social media, I was no longer using it for entertainment. It was becoming very triggering and no longer, you know, you wake up on Twitter or Instagram, you see something that pisses you off, it sets your day, it sets the tone of your day. Mm. So I really needed to go and reassess what I want to use social media for. And I think now I'm in a good... It's clear. Yeah, it's clear for me. Yo. Yeah. That was deep. But was the time you were out of social media, I think, mm. is, is before you went on the American tour? It was after. It was after. So mm -hmm. when did you go on the tour? Because I was following the tour. Because then yes. I remember during that period, I saw you gigging. Yeah. I saw you, you know, having a great time in America, <laughs> hang out with yes. farm and your friends. Yes. It wasn't even meant to be. It wasn't even meant to be a tour, honestly. I was just, I hadn't been. So I'm an American citizen. I was born there in mm. Indiana. But I hadn't been there in over 16 years. So this wow. was my first time back in the States. So I was just going to visit a friend and my grandma in Indiana. Then I ended up booking a gig in DC and then I ended up somehow ended up going to LA and New York and just visiting these new places and mm. meeting new people. And it was one of the best, most surreal experiences I've ever had. Doing this cross country alone, traveling alone by myself. I'm like, am I a grown woman right now? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful. God was really like providing for me. And with me, every step of the way, alignment, like, literally. Yeah. So then when I came home in December, I did a gig. Then December was just a very wild time. I came home to a lot of things happening. Then that's what kind of made me just go offline. Mm. But now I'm back. Awesome. Better. You must have felt, um, you know, different and new to be back to your country after yeah. so such a long time. Yeah. But as a grown woman, you know, yes. running your own things, mm -hmm. taking yourself around. Mm -hmm. What did grandma say? And uh, and especially even about your career in music, yes. you know, seeing that little girl now grown having up. grown up. Right. I think Shosho was just happy to have me there. I spent Thanksgiving with her. I was with my whole Kenyan family out there. She just, just those ge wisdom gems that only grandmas can give. Uh, when, when I was sad about Sadria's relationship, she's like, girl, ain't nobody go needs to make you that sad. Like, you are a queen. And she's just <laughs> affirming me. So um, even just with the music, she didn't say anything specific, but I know she's proud of me. Mm. And I'm so grateful to have that support in my life. And where's your mama right now? In this moment, she's at work. In <laughs> but Kenya. She's in Kenya, yes. Okay. I live with her. Okay, so you all both came to Kenya. Yes. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So we came here in 2006, mm -hmm. and we've been living here ever since, just me and her. And where did you study um, journalism? Or actually, you're just at the verge of 
completing mm-hmm. your degree. Yes, I'm in my second last semester mm-hmm. right now. I just came from class actually before <laughs> this. Um, journalism, eh, it's been a while. I should have graduated by now, but I've taken a few semester breaks because, you know, I went to the U.S., I did like perform so many things that I don't regret doing, but it has extended my graduation time. Mm. But I'm finally finishing and I'm so happy to, to have that monkey off my back. <laughs> like That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So I wanted to take you back to your earlier influences, you know, mm-hmm. growing up. I think you spoke about your mommy, mm-hmm. you know, inspiring you, mm-hmm. being a single mom, mm-hmm. being able to do all these things, mm-hmm. made you feel like I can also put my hand in different things I want to do, just like mommy. Yes. But over and above that, who are your other influences? Do you have any father figures? Mm-hmm. Do you have it, other family members who are supportive? Mm-hmm. And also what kind of music or musicians? did you listen to um, you know that made you want to be who you are today Mm. well I'd say uh, apart from my mom the family my uncles obviously are like you know my two uncles shout out to Uncle Solo and Uncle Charles they've definitely you know been a father father figures in my life Mm. that you know I always feel protected and encouraged by Um, and who was I inspired by well, I grew up. I grew up listening to like seeing Missy Elliott, Destiny's Child, Beyonce, um, you know Rihanna, Neo, Nicki Minaj, um, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a very big inspiration as a performer, live performer. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say those are be my main influences. Mm. Yeah, and with for different things, I feel like I have Nicki Minaj influencing like my rap persona. I have Michael Jackson influencing my life, my love for life performance art. Um, Destiny's Child as well. The um, soulful, spicy, yes. spicy season girl. You know, and like putting on <laughs> the a melodies. show, the outfits, the melodies, the. The, the just the swag the swag yeah, you know I see that's each child just gave what I they needed it. to give so yeah <laughs> I see it I see mm-hmm. it so b- before we started this interview we were actually having our own chat and I was telling you one of the other reasons I really love you and you're one of my favorite artists period is and you go um you really do keep it consistent, even though you might, you know, listen to your older records and feel like, ah, mm-hmm. uh, how was I sounding here? Mm-hmm. Like even driving to this interview, I was listening to your discography at random. Really? And I was like, oh my God, yes. Then I look, I'm like, this is from 2018. Yes. So for 2020, oh this gosh. is from 2022. And then 2023, I feel like from the first time I got to know Valerie Modoni, mm-hmm you have only changed for the better to surprise me, you know, to give me more spice, to give Mm -hmm. me more of what I didn't know I needed, Mm -hmm. but you never really disappointed me. It only gets more and more iller and cooler, especially when you rap. What? And you go, I'm literally fighting back tears. No, for real. Truly, I feel, and this is me giving you your flowers. Like I said, even when we were chatting, like even on my first EP, you showed me love and, and it's i to 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 receive this like love and from you it's it means a lot cuz anika she knows the stars of the stars <laughs> she represents the baddest of the baddest the biggest and the best so i'm so grateful and thank you. Uh, I, I was telling how I was just like, I wish I could delete those old projects because no, when I listen to my voice, I'm like, oh. And I, do, and I don't know why I thought about that. And then you're like, I wish I could delete. Because I was just yeah. like, the 28 <laughs> Val- 2018 Valerie, mm. she was still so badass. She was. She though. was. She was. Some badass big <laughs> collabs over there. Yeah, I love it. I oh. love it. And we're only getting better. We're only getting better. Yeah. So do you want to take him through um, the, the, the EPs from 2018? Sure. For those who are watching and haven't caught up. Right. So my first EP called The Wavy Soul. I'm a Pisces. I'm a wavy baby. <laughs> I love the ocean. So, you know, we had to put it in there. It's, it was my first EP and I, I was singing in there. I had some poetry in there. I had r and I had a little bit of hip hop. Um, and yeah, that was my introduction to the industry, which I was brought such great reception. I'm so grateful. Um, then I had Pisces Season, which was a three track EP. It was one R&B song, one mm. hip hop song called Legendary. 
and then pi- spicy season, which is yeah my biggest the, hit. Yes, to date. yes. I think that's when. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. That was a big up. break. Yeah. It was. And a dope video at that. It was. Very dope. Thank you. Directed that with uh Natasha Eo. Of course you directed it. Yeah. Girl. Girl. <laughs> Love it. Right. Thank you. And CJ Pixel shot it and edited. Um, yeah, that was a moment. We brought together the culture of Nairobi at the time, I feel like we put it in a time capsule and put it on a video because right. I just invited all my homies and they came and I had Belair and Bumbo sponsoring. Yeah, so it was, was so such cool. a great. That was twenty nine. That was twenty nineteen before twenty twenty came and just you know flipped things on its head. So um, yeah, after that, I did in twenty twenty late twenty twenty. I did a, a virtual concert. And I made a live album out of it called Sugar and Spice Live Sessions. And yeah, that's just me and my band, the Jukebox Band. And we're just going crazy. My whole discography live. Because I love live albums. Like Beyonce has some live albums. I just, it's it's less perfect. And it's it's more real and yeah. more authentic. And yeah. So yeah, and that's where we're at right now. I'm just, um, and now the EP. Congratulations. Here we are. Thank what you. does mom think? Does mom support you? Is <laughs> yes. she proud? Yes. I think I think she she supported me from day one. That's After high nice. school, she allowed me to take um a do a music production diploma. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's her just supporting me then, you know, before I did my degree. Right now she's I'd I'd like to believe she's proud of me. She doesn't say it too often, <laughs> so I don't get a big head. And you know, moms, how they are. Yeah. Uh, but I know with the things she shows me and supports me that I know she she's proud. Mm. And I Nabado, I want her to be able to buy her girl the, the woman a house, you know? Of course. Or a car. Of course. So yeah. Of course. From your mouth mm. to God's ears. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What Amen. is your relationship with performance? I know you love to perform. You mm. you 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 know you get a new life from mm. just being on stage. So tell yeah. me about that. You know you've toured a lot even in the past. Had mm. an opportunity to share big stages with right, big artists. Right. You know the likes of Saudi Soul, Burner Boy. Yes. Tell me more about performances. I feel like now this year things are back in Kenya. Like yeah. before and before this year it wasn't really. Uh, mm. back to normal until this year. So mm. gigs have started coming yeah, and force. people are not afraid to be out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love live performance art. It's been my favorite since I was a kid. I used to watch, to this day, I still go watch hours of people's like tours performing, even this Renaissance tour that I don't know if <laughs> Africans will ever see. But I, I've always enjoyed just the theatrics of it all. Just because music... Is great when you're listening to it, but when you get to experience it, it adds a whole other dimension true, to it, true. you know. And I love it when artists not just use music, but they use visuals and choreography and, and costume. And it's so exciting to me. It brings together all the things I love and puts it on a stage. And the energy from people is so amazing. I can't even explain it. You know, seeing someone sing word for word your song and hype you up and it's so beautiful so that to me live performance is my favorite part of being a musician and i'm i'm praying i get better at it because i i'm not even there i'm not where i want to be yet Mm. but you know i pray i continue getting a good team around me that can help make me better and yeah Cool. Mm-hmm. I saw you went over to BN, mm-hmm. had a nice time with yeah. him at his home, played yeah. him the music. Yeah. And you did this beautiful post and said, oh, I had a nice time with BN and the goat is certifying my, yes. uh, my EP. I think that's a really amazing thing you did because a lot of artists sometimes stay um, you know, close to their own mm-hmm. art and craft. Mm-hmm. And even on this podcast, a lot of artists have told me stuff like, I don't listen to other music because mm-hmm. it influences me and I don't want any outside influence. Mm-hmm. So it's not every artist who's going to go to another artist and say, listen to this. What do you think about it? Because there's a risk mm-hmm. that they could think it's shit yeah, or yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then that could throw you off and, mm-hmm. you know, mess with your plan yeah so tell me about you know that um dive when you decide i'm going to sit down with such an amazing songwriter and i want him to tell me the truth yes and um yeah it's definitely a bit scary (laughs) because 
Bien is bien of salty soul. Bien me barasa. Come on, guys. You know, and but like he said <laughs> in the post, he it's it sort of feels all divinely aligned because when I was in high school, he he met my mom and my mom made him write me write me an autograph. And it said, you know, good luck in this music thing. And now, and then even when I was back in like 2019, when I needed a place to do dance rehearsals, he'd always let me use Soul Gen. He's always been accessible to me. And I'm so grateful for that. And I I I was I was I was a bit scared because I'm like, if if he doesn't like it, Valerie, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I told myself, like, um, take the construct constructive criticism well and if there's things about like your your ep or your music that's intentional because you no know, everyone every artist is different he might like he might like something or some other thing he might be like i don't like this and i'll be like well i like it exactly so i had to remind myself that some you can stick to stick to your to your to your guns stick to your guns yeah and you know take what you what take or the honest feedback you can but also you know stick to your artistry and, and be confident in knowing that you know what's right for your music mm. so um it was scary but he he was amazing he <laughs> listened he really gave me his undivided attention and it was awesome and it was very rare cuz i'm like you must and this was like 2 days before he was flying out yeah. for his tour so yeah um shout out to you bian I'm really Have you done such a thing before, you know, or probably in the studio with other artists or other producers when you're producing mm. and you're like, hey, yo, we just finished this track. Mm. Maybe one artist, um, Mudhoni Drama Queen, mm. she sort of like a mentor um, when I was, even that, the way we sold that first EP. Mm. <laughs> she, <laughs> I remember <laughs> she telling me, yeah, Valerie, this is, because at the time, the mixing and mastering, audio engineering was terrible. Oh. She was like, Valerie, you can't put this out like this. And I started crying because I was like 17. Aww. I'm like, oh my God. But I'm so grateful because she's my hardest critic and I'm I'm grateful for her. And I went and I reworked it and I worked on it again. And she's one of the reasons why I also never want to, never allow myself to put out anything mediocre. Mm. Um, so it's important. It's scary as an artist, but have someone outside of yourself and outside of your team that's just going to be yes, man, to tell you honestly, what you need to hear. Mm. You don't have to agree with all of it. You don't even have to take all the advice, but it's good to hear it mm. sometimes. So, yeah. I see the kind of artist, um, you know, who inspire you or who you look up to or who you admire. Who are the other artists who, you know, also give you this vibe? They mm. don't have to be from Kenya, from wherever. Mm. Um, that yeah. inspire me? Yeah, that inspire you, that you look up to and you would, you know, if you get a chance to have them listen to your records, you share with them. Mm, I really, I really, really love Nasty C. I love Nyashinsky. Nyash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a really manifesting meeting and maybe even collaborate. That I've met him, be, but I want to collaborate with him. That would him. be nice. Um, Burner Boy. I don't know if Burner Boy would have the time to listen to a whole EP, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> If you give him a smoke, he probably will. Ah, got <laughs> you, my bro. <laughs> yes, you could. Uh, oh, my yes. goodness. But I'd say those for now. I don't know if anyone else comes to mind. But in Africa, it's like Nasisi, Nyashinsky, Burna Boy are my mm. favorite, favorite artists. And in your um, experience in the industry so far, how is it navigating the Kenyan music industry? I think one thing that... A conversation that always comes up is what's happening in Kenya, why we're we lagging behind, mm. da 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 da. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes there are a lot of advancement that, that that we have or a lot of development happening in the industry, but because you we could get stuck up in saying we're not moving, mm. um, then we don't see what's what are the what are other great things are happening. A lot of other great things are happening. Mm -hmm. And for me, what I've seen happen, which is amazing in this industry, is just a lot of artists producing dope content, you know, yeah. more EPs, more albums. Yep. There was a time when EPs and albums were so rare, but mm. now there are so many, you literally can't catch up. Right. So in my opinion, we are making progress, we maybe are. not as fast as everyone would wish. Mm -hmm. But how would you, you know, review the Kenyan music industry as an artist who exists in this industry? industry? I'm really proud of us. 
I feel like as Kenyans in general, we're very resilient people. Mm-hmm. And we take the the jabs as they come and we keep it pushing. But yeah, it's very easy to be pessimistic about like, oh, you know. Because Kenya does have its, Kenya, the Kenyan music industry does have its faults and does have its and frustrations. But like things that we're, we're actually moving right now, I can I can name like maybe three music programs that are like incubator programs for DJs, for producers, for managers, for event organizers, shout out Perform, shout out Santuri, mm-hmm. East Africa, shout out, you know, there's so, that's amazing. Because before the, the problem was we don't have the, the uh, knowledge or like school proper, proper curriculums for people to learn professional music industry stuff. And mm. now we are having a lot of that. Yes. Now we have, we never had Spotify before. Now we have Spotify. Exactly. Now we have artists like Nikita doing soundtracks for Netflix. Like there's so many things, <laughs> right? Shout out to yeah. Anika. Uh, <laughs> there's so many great things that are happening. Now we have, you know, Kenya's first series on Netflix. Right. And it's on Netflix Global because there's the... Um, Netflix Africa. Africa and Global. So it's amazing. And right. so and there's a new Netflix series coming up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So amazing things happening. So we, have, we truly just have to... If we choose to look at the glass as half empty, of course, it's going to be half empty. But... Um, I choose to be optimistic about it. I know there's a lot of things I can complain about, but I'm really proud of us and mm. I'm grateful for the opportunities that continue to open up mm. and present and themselves. And as a musician who exists in and, and who's active in the industry, what are the things that you feel uh, need more support or that we can work more on? Mm. And for me, I always felt like it's, it's that... Um, building on the professionals, building on the skill. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to help Mm -hmm. and are positioned as publicists, managers, but they don't know the technical know-how. They don't have the skill. Mm -hmm. So now that more and more people are getting the skill or getting Mm -hmm. opportunities to get the skill, I Mm -hmm. feel like this is going to benefit our industry in the next couple of years. So what else do you feel, you know, we can do, Mm -hmm. you know, for those watching who want to work in the industry, want to work with artists, Mm -hmm. what do we need to do? Well, we probably mm -hmm. need to do a lot of things. Yes, there's a lot, (laughs) but I'm like, where do I start? (laughs) Um, Maybe off the top of my head. Um, The event promoting lives, the event event industry is, can be a bit messy, a lot messy. When it comes to like the politics of even like payments to even live sound and even just like it's very few organizations and event organizers that are doing the thing and doing it on time and actually following through when they say they're going to pay you at a certain time, you know, very it's very few, so um, I don't know how we can help that. So most of the most most of the payments for artists are coming in quite late. Yeah, you know, and even just like. Is I don't know if it's in every industry, but they're always trying to underpay people. You yeah. know, they'll save the millions for the headliners, and like that's great. Have your headliners, but like, and then even just it, it's forget even the millions. It's also it goes down to even how you're treating mm. these artists. I, you know, I've gone to events where the supporting acts they're all put in one tent attached. They don't have food or the drinks, you know, where is your, they haven't been fulfilled, the technical rider or the hospitality rider. And there's no repercussions. They're like, you see, you're here to do the performance. You perform, it's like very backhanded, mm. you know, there's no respect, which is unfortunate because the Kenyans that are coming to see Kenyan, art, like the artists are bringing their Kenyan crowd, you know, they are True diehard that. fans. So I'm really praying that it continue, it changes and evolves. And even just, <laughs> I saw an interview the other day, uh, event organizing aside, where uh, an artist was like, it's like for you to make money as an artist in Kenya, now you have to be an influencer as well. Which I was like, that's, a part of that is kind of true. Well, not fully, but like, the biggest revenue streams for a lot of artists these days is brand endorsements, like influencing something. Mm. Which, you know, we really, ideally, in an ideal world, artists can sell, should be able to sell their merch and make money or sell their music and make or money. Perform or perform at a concert and make 
a decent amount. Exactly. Because the amount of money as artists that we have costs for, especially female artists, you hire a male artist, they'll come, they'll do the show. Us, we have to make up artists, stylists. Yeah. You know, there's so much more that goes into it. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to dwell too much on that. But Yeah, I think, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. Mm. You know, we are coming to a, situ- a, a situation or... Um, an industry where it you prob- an artist could probably get paid more to influence than to perform on stage. Right. You know, literally, literally, and even then, there are still advertising agencies that want to be the middlemen and underpay mm. those influencers. So, um, well, I, I I'm sharp. Please, oh. if you see artists, you know, selling merch or selling content or sell, doing their own shows. Mm. Please support them. Please support them. And yeah. it's it's funny because I posted actually something yesterday on social media because um, there's a friend of mine who interviewed me for her podcast and she cut a, a little clip of what I was saying and then mm. she said, we need to talk more about paying creatives because yeah. I was speaking in that podcast and saying the first artist who paid me as a publicist they paid me despite the fact that I didn't have an invoice and I didn't mm. have um, I didn't have a fee, you know, mm. I didn't have a rate mm-hmm. yet at that point, the very mm. first two gigs. Mm. So I was saying in that podcast, like, thank you so much to the artists who paid me, yeah. even when I couldn't supply an invoice. And after they paid me, that's when I started knowing, like, what could be my rate and mm. Kumbe, I can actually charge other artists who come to me because they would now be coming and saying, we also don't have money, we also don't have mm. money. So what I want to say in response to what you've said, anybody mm. listening, anybody watching, mm-hmm. be the change we crave for in this industry. Don't mm-hmm. be the person sitting in the agency. Don't be the uh, manager. Don't be the person sitting in a corporate office taking right. advantage of the creatives and the artists in the right. scene. And especially taking advantage of them because um, they're not as experienced or that mm. they are young. Mm-hmm. People take advantage of young people. It's just like, or this because is an you don't artist have unions. who's 33 years old and mm. she's 23. So mm. we'll take advantage of her till she's 30 and she right. knows her value. It's so wrong. Like, I want to be the change and I want to treat my staff and colleagues mm. better than I was treated coming up in the industry. So right. if you had more people, you know, treating the creatives like that, you would mm-hmm. not come to a gig and be mistreated mm-hmm. or be underpaid. Mm-hmm. You'd actually be paid more because Absolutely. there's more money, but Absolutely. these people always just bag in mm-hmm. the extra money and still pay you less than you should be paid. Mm-hmm. So that's truly unacceptable and it's something I think this industry needs to work hard at. Yeah, and yeah. even like artists, you know, sometimes, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> I always have conversations with my mom and, she, you know, she's always like, yeah, this is the way it should be, but also this is the way it is. So what are you going to do with what it is right now? Mm. And like, so for artists, I've, I have I found, um, um, if you don't mind me saying, there's this thing called Msani where I, I, I they print out like a tip, tip, um, poster and mm-hmm. while I'm performing people can scan it and tip me and it's things like those artists find ways to to get the most out of the platforms you and have they, and I like that thing I love it and yeah. I started seeing it since uh, from the COVID time yeah because there were a lot of um virtual concerts mm-hmm. or sometimes people are just going on YouTube or, mm-hmm. or not well mostly Instagram or Facebook to do their thing. lives and then they're like oh you can send money to this I loved yeah. it I loved it I yeah. really loved it and I think I sent some money a couple of times to some people. God yeah, maybe Noel De Rito. He was also doing that. So shout out, Noel. Shout out to you. Yeah. Like, if you want to get on social media and sing a song for us and yep. ask us to tip you, we will tip you. Yep, and the real <laughs> the real ones will come through for you. Trust. Yeah. Like, that will be enough for your Uber home the next right? time. Like, it really comes in handy. When I say my kidogo, kidogo hujaza kibaba. Exactly. <laughs> Gotta be smart. <laughs> you have to be. I, yeah. I love it. I, I feel like um I never know how the you know podcast is gonna go, how the interview is gonna go. Mm. And I feel like we spoke about so many things. It wasn't just the music, but that's <laughs> what I love about um, you know, having this podcast and inviting different guests because yeah. we just went on just keep going our yeah. own tangents. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So it's as it should be. we've come to the end. No. Uh, what do you want to say to anyone listening? Um, wow. You know, those who have been, you know, representing for 
brown sugar from day yes, one. Yes. You know, and your family, your friends. Yes. Any message you want. Anything. Yeah. Well, first of all, shout out to Nico. Like I said before, give her her flowers. Subscribe. Give her your money. Um, I, I also just want to <laughs> thank, you know, anyone that's that's been following me. And not just following me, but invested in my career that's bought a ticket, that's shared my music, shared, you sh put me on their playlist. Like, I see each and every one of you, even though I may not be able to respond to it. And I'm so, so grateful. And I pray that you guys are blessed. If you're an artist and you're trying to make music, keep going. We're going to do it. We're going to make it. And EP, Vision 2020, is streaming now. Thank you, Brown Sugar. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I you. wish you well in Thank everything. You. This EP is popping. Asante Sana for the dope music. Um, Asante Sana for those who are listening. This was um, Brown Sugar at my yes. podcast, VIP Access. Next week, we're giving you access to yet another celebrity and superstar's mm -hmm. lifestyle. You know, Letting you know what goes down behind the music, behind their business. And so that note that we end the show today, much love.